Satin stitch is a beautiful embroidery stitch that is used to fill in shapes, but it can be difficult to get it to look smooth and nice. So today I'm gonna to share some tricks that will help you get a better result with satin stitch. Welcome to EBITDA Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pojagi, and embroidery. So satin stitch is a great stitch that can be used in a lot of ways in embroidery. It can be used for filling in shapes. It can be used for doing thick lettering. It can be used in border designs and it can be used even in thick outlines. So I have this project this is a house embroidery and in this I've used satin stitch in a number of places. So these bricks are done with satin stitch with variegated thread which gives it a fun look. These shutters are done with satin stitch, the outline on the windows and the door is done with satin stitch. So there's a lot of satin stitch in this project and that will give you a little bit of inspiration for how you can use it in a project. But satin stitch can be difficult to get it to lie smooth and flat. And it takes a lot of practice. So here's a couple of tricks that will help you. And I'm gonna demonstrate a couple of different ways to do satin stitch. The first trick is if you're filling in a shape, start in the middle of the shape and work out to the edge. Then come back to the middle and work out to the other edge. This will help it be a lot smoother than if you start at one side and move to the other side. Another trick is, if you're doing a bigger piece or a piece with multiple directions, mark a couple of guidelines just to help you get the direction of how you want your stitches to go. The last thing is be sure, sure, sure to separate the strands of your embroidery floss. So some people I know will stitch satin stitch with only one strand of embroidery floss because you want the lines of the floss to lay beside each other. You don't want them to be twisted with each other because that won't give you the nice satin stitch effect. But you can stitch with more than one strand. You just need to separate your strands and then join them together. So you can use two or three strands, sometimes even more if you're super careful, but separate them and then lay them together and this will help the strands to not be twisted together. Then as you're stitching, you can lay them carefully. There is even something called a laying tool or you can use a large needle to help them lay beside each other and not get twisted together. So here's a couple of different ways to do satin stitch. I'm going to be using three strands of embroidery floss. So I separate my three strands and then I join them together, laying them so that the threads are parallel to each other. So I want this strip to be pretty flat. Then I'll thread the needle and I'll begin stitching. So in this shape, I'm just stitching plain regular satin stitch. So I'll start by stitching a line in the middle of the shape from the bottom to the top. And you can see how I'm holding the thread, controlling it, especially at the end as it goes through to get as much as possible the strands of thread laying beside each other. So I don't wanna have any twists in that. So once the middle line is there as a guide, then I will move out to one side stitching parallel lines in the same way. So I want as much as possible to have all the strands of thread laying parallel to each other right beside each other. You can see that I'm using my thumb and the needle to help keep all the threads straight. Once I get to the end of that side, I will come to the back and then slide the thread through the stitches on the back to go back to the middle of the shape. 
Then I will stitch the other side of the shape in the same way, starting in the middle and working out to the edge. This next little spot I'm going to be doing with an outline backstitch and this will help make the edge a bit smoother. And so to do this I'm going to begin by backstitching all around the shape. And this is just a regular backstitch but my stitches are kind of small just because it's a small rounded shape. Once the back stitch is done, I'm just going to run my fingers along the thread to make sure all the strands are still laying parallel. And then I'm going to come back and do my straight stitch in the middle of the shape, just like I did last time. And I'm stitching over these back stitches. So they're going to be hidden in the inside of the shape and it won't be clearly noticeable. But it is just helping define the edge of the shape as I do the satin stitch. So just like last time, I begin with a stitch in the middle and then I'm stitching parallel stitches out first to one side and then to the other side. So you can see on this finished shape, it still looks the same with the parallel stitches, but the edges are a bit more defined. On this last shape, I'm doing something called padded satin stitch. So I began with stitching back stitch around the shape and then on the inside, I just did a few lines of satin stitch in the opposite direction. In those stitches, I didn't worry as much about getting the thread smooth because that is just me padding on the inside. So once that padding stitching has been done, then I'm stitching in just the same way, one stitch in the middle of the shape and then out to one edge and then back to the middle and over to the other edge. This shape does have more texture to it because of the padding stitches underneath and the color and shape are a bit more well defined. So if you need this extra effect in the shape, it's worth the extra effort to do the padding stitches underneath. So there you can see whether you do just plain satin stitch or satin stitch with an outline or padded satin stitch, they all look great and you can see the threads laying right beside each other. So have fun using satin stitch in your next embroidery project. For more embroidery tutorials and inspiration, be sure to follow EBITDA Studio.